Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. So it's going to be time for a new campaign here today in Total War Attila. We are playing with a mod, and this mod is called the Age of Justinian. I believe the version right now is the Age of Justinian 2.1. There is a description, or this, there's a link in the description down below to download this mod from the Steam Workshop. And so basically this mod takes the last Roman campaign and allows you to play as Rome or as some other nations that are kind of, I guess, custom in the last Roman campaign. So we're going to go ahead, come on over to the grand campaign screen. And so um, basically you can play as, I believe this guy here would be the Huns. So this, this year is uh, 527 AD during the reign of the Emperor Justinian. Um, he is said to be, quote, the last Roman emperor before um, basically the Roman Empire, at least in the East, turned to something else, right? It kind of morphed into what it, what was Byzantium, what was called Byzantium. Um, that's why Justinian is always known as the last the last Roman. That's what they call him. Um, really a move from the ancient period of Rome, that ancient antiquity time, to something else, to something that's closer to our modern, uh, at least Middle Ages, feudalistic age, kind of. And so uh, we have a couple factions here. So these are the Hafalides, which I'm, I'm, I'm assuming... The Hafalites is basically anybody who's from the steppes, right? The Hunnic hordes. I'm not really sure why they're called Hafalites or Hafalites. They follow Tengarism. Uh, they have a they have a leader, I guess. But um, there's there's a couple other factions as well. The Empires of Sand. You can play as the Sasanian Empire, as the Sassanids of Persia. You can play as the Aksumites. Uh, they follow Eastern Christianity here in uh, in Ethiopia. And then uh, we have the last Romans, right? These these are the Romans. This is this is Justinian, I believe, Flavius uh, Justinianus Augustus. Uh, following Orthodox Christianity. It's kind of weird that I guess this guy follows Orthodox Christianity, whereas these Axumites follow Eastern Christianity. The, the mod, I think, is still getting its legs together. It's getting its uh, getting on its feet. So um, we're, we're actually not playing as Romans. I'll admit, we're not playing as Romans here in the, in the year 527 AD. Um, what I actually wanted to do was I wanted to come over here to the New Kingdoms. And so there's a few, a few Germanic kingdoms that you cannot play as in the original last Roman campaign, I believe you're able to play as the Ostrogoths here in Italy and, and a lot in the, uh, the Balkans as well. Um, you can play as the Vandals in Africa. The Vandals are, you know, who Belisarius invades in, I believe, uh, five, I think it was 530 AD, where we, when um, the Byzantine Empire reconquered Africa. Um, there's the Vandalic Kingdom here, this Germanic Northern Kingdom here. Uh, the Ostrogoths, like I said, in Italy. We have the uh, Burgundians. The Burgundians, I believe, are actually a new kingdom that you can carve out here in the old school kingdom of Burgundy in 527 AD. Um, I was considering playing as the Burgundians, but we're actually not going to. There are the Franks here in uh, in Gaul, and then there's the Visigothic Kingdom, which is here in Hispania. But we're going to be playing as the Swabian Kingdom. Um, here in this mod, it's called the Swabian Kingdom, but they, they were called the Swebi. Uh, S-U-E-B-I. The Swebi. Um, so the Swebi were old school Germanics here in, in what is today Portugal, and at least um, the Kingdom of Leon. And so these guys uh, were a little different compared to the Visigoths over here. These these guys were, um, they're both Germanic, the Visigoths and the Swebi. But, I don't know, the Swebi, they, they eventually evolved into what is what is Portugal, right? They, they became Portugal, they spoke Portuguese, whereas the Visigoths were, um, you know, they... they came into speaking Spanish. They were they were the descendants of Spaniards and such. So there is a distinction between the Swebi and the Visigoths. And I wanted to try out playing as a Swebian kingdom here. They uh, Their faction leader is uh, Gundiok. They follow Aryan Christianity, which is now extinct. And uh, just a little background, the Swebi were Germanic people from east of the Rhine, accustomed to raiding the Roman Empire since the time of Julius Caesar. They eventually migrated alongside the Vandals and Alans in 406 AD, when the freezing of the Rhine provided them with ample opportunity to seek a newer, safer, more prosperous life for their people in the heartlands of the Western Roman Empire. So the Vandals eventually went to uh, North Africa, but the Swebi actually settled here in Hispania. Let's see. Um, their greatest threat comes from the mighty Visigoths. The kingdom is large and uh, conflict with them Conflict with them is inevitable if we wish to ensure the safety and security of our kingdom and our people. So their cultural trait is new kingdoms. They actually get minus 50% religious unrest and plus two public order, which is pretty damn strong. That's, that's pretty significant. But their faction trait is actually that they are skilled migrators. They have minus 35% upkeep for any army that loses their Saxon settlement. And they have uh, horde buildings, construction costs minus 35%. Even though they actually do start out with settlements, it makes a lot of sense for them to actually be migrators. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We're going to go ahead and play on hard difficulty. I'm, I'm not the best Total War player, so I think very hard might be a little counterproductive. Um, as in our Akane Rebellion campaign, I believe was not, not very good. Uh, battle time limit, 60 minutes. No advice. Show AI player moves off. Let's go ahead and load on up. So really, um, 
I, I'm excited to play as a Swebby. I actually did do a couple offline um, turns with him. I've played with him for maybe two, three hours on my own, and it's actually great fun. It is fucking awesome. Um, they have Germanic units, but at the same time, they're they're very rich. Their settlements are very, very wealthy. They follow Aryan Christianity, and uh, really, it's it's actually really good fun to kind of overthrow the Visigoths and secure Hispania for yourself. So let's go ahead and jump on in. And I am uh, very excited, actually, to show you guys to show you guys a Swebby. Um, it's it's really great fun. They're not necessarily difficult. They're not really like easy, but they're not they're not hard either compared to perhaps some other starts in this mod in the Age of Justinian mod. So let's go ahead and uh, and take a look. All right. So we uh, we start here, like I said, in the kingdom, the old school kingdom of Leon. This this city here, Velispo, is is I'm pretty damn sure. Um, yeah, like this this is this is old school Portugal here. This is not necessarily Lisbon. I guess it might be. Um, we have some some cities here: Brigantium, Asturica, and then we have a uh, Bracara. I believe this is uh, the, the city of Asturias. I guess in in old school. Hispanic terms. So we uh, we have four thousand in our treasury. We make thirty five ninety. We're not at war with anybody, to my knowledge, and we are completely surrounded by the Visigoths. The Visigoths own everything from the uh, the Rock of Gibraltar. They own all the way here into Narbonensis. Um, I believe they actually. I'm not sure if they own anything in Aquitania as well. They actually historically lost this territory here um, around this time, actually around what would be five twenty seven A.D. So we don't want to trade with the Visigoths. We actually have fairly uh, crappy relations with the Romans, although we are trading with them, which is pretty cool. There's uh, Romano Africa here, as well as the Moors. So these these little nations here, Romano Africa, basically there's there's these factions that can rise up in Britain, Gaul, and Africa that are basically Roman, right? They're they're Roman. I guess they follow Latin Christianity. So um, you'll see these factions is like Romano Africa. You'll see Romano Gaul, Romano Britannia. They'll actually be fighting against all the all the uh, Germanic kingdoms and stuff. It's pretty cool, but they themselves are not actually puppets of the Romans. The Romans are actually kind of um, trying to bring these guys into the fold. So it's actually really interesting. Let's see if we can get any trade agreements here. The Moors probably won't bother us too much. Um, let's see. We have crappy relations with mostly everybody. So I don't imagine we're going to have any any trade agreements. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So let's go and take a look here. Let's just take a look. How's our public order? Uh, it's not great. Let's see. We have our capital cities. Looks like these little... These look like Latin towns. Vicus. I guess that's that might be Latin for village. I believe it is, actually, because this is a city, Civitus. Yeah, so Vicus is a village, and then a Civitus is a Latin city. Um, we could convert these into Bergs and uh, Torps. Although, I think I might hold off on that for now. Let's actually go ahead and take a look. Let's see. We produce gold in Bracara, which means we get a lot of money from our gold veins here. Um, we're going to want to upgrade that ASAP. Squalor plus three, public order minus five. So we get a gold, a gold mine or a goldsmith. What that? What goes down the goldsmith uh, tree? Looks like we get more money from going down this tree. I'm not really sure why there's any reason to pick this one. I don't think there is a reason to go down this one. Then I think we just make more money from here. So that's four thousand itself. Um, let's see. Is there anything else we have to do? We have our main army here in Bracara. Looks like we have some Germanic levies. We got some Germanic bands, Germanic bows, uh, Germanic brigands. We can upgrade these brigands to cavalry. So we go from 140 to 310 upkeep. Let's go ahead and not do that just yet. Uh, we go from Germanic bows to Germanic hunters. Not a bad idea. This Germanic band for another 40 upkeep, we can actually upgrade them to medium X inven inventory. So let's actually go ahead and do that because we're going to need some good troops there. Uh, these Germanic levies, we go from 99 upkeep to 189 from light spear inventory to heavy spears so i guess we will go ahead and do that it's going to cost us some money here let's go take a look at our research we're actually quite a ways away here in this military tech but we've got no civilian tech here so let's go ahead and try and try and get some civic tech uh this is going to get us some new farming buildings uh let's see five percent agricultural five percent income from agricultural buildings this gives us construction cost excellent so what we're going to do right now is we're basically going to build up our economy and hopefully build up what I would like to be, what I would like to have. We want to build up three different armies. We want to have one in the south, one in the center of Hispania, and then one in the north. And I want to take Pompeo, uh, Toledo, which is Toledo, and then we want to go into Gibraltar. First, we're going to want to conquer the rest of Lusitania, definitely annex this territory. And hopefully we have three different forces with which to invade. We make a lot of money now, but we definitely got to build up our income a little bit before that's going to... Before that's going to come along. So, let's see. What troops can we recruit from this province here? Germanic Spearmen. 
Noble Germanics. Let's see, Germanic Warband. These are heavy infantry, so we might want a couple of those guys here. Germanic Hunters. Definitely will want some Siege Artillery. Some Onagers. 215 upkeep, but they have good missile damage against um, infantry. A lot of these Visigothic troops are going to be lightly armored. Um, we want to get some good Cav. I think I definitely want quite a bit of cavalry in my armies. So I'm not sure if we should build something here. We got wood carvers. We're going to want some... Let's see, we have some jetties. We have a lack of food is what I've noticed, actually. Um, and we have two jetties that we can upgrade. They cost 3,000 each. I kind of want to get some food jetties. So some fishing jetties. We get some commerce and we get food. And then here, I think I might want to do a trade jetty. We don't need a military jetties because there really is no naval combat that we're going to be participating in for a while. Hmm... Or should I build another another structure here? Let's see, a wood carver. Yeah, so we went from an artisan to a wood carver. This would give us this smithy would give us some cavalry. Although I think I will hang on hang on to these Germanic uh, to the wood carver so we can get some bowmen. I think we'll hang on to that. It also gives us an augers too, so that's nice. I guess we'll just upgrade this to uh, yeah. How about we do a trade jetty here for some income? And we'll leave it at that. We will go ahead and make this jetty in the next turn a fishing jetty. And then we'll get some other stuff here, hopefully for some industry. Uh, we're going to want to upgrade this gold vein here probably pretty soon. Four turns for that. Let's go and sign a provincial governor. We got Hari Ulf and Laudiger. This guy's got more loyalty, so I'm just going to go ahead and put him in Galicia. I can go ahead and upgrade or in, enact an edict here. Uh, how's our religion? So we follow Aryan Christianity, and it is going up, but it's going to take some time to get here. So why don't we do... I could do plus four Aryan Christianity, the Doctrines of Arius, and then Morale Training, plus 10%. Uh, I'm not going to lie, Construction Cost would be kind of cool too. Growth plus 10. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for that, the Construction Cost. Yeah, Religion and Local Traditions plus 6%. I don't even need, I don't even think we're going to need an Aryan Baptistry here. I think we're going to be just fine. Let's go and end the turn there. Let's see here. We've got the Heftia Lights, Romans. What else do we have in this game? Got quite a bit. Saxon Kingdoms. Hopefully we can play as more countries in the future. I know that, you know, the, the, the tech trees and, you know, faction lists and stuff, uh, or the unit rosters and stuff need to be upgraded to do that. Okay, so we're going to want to convert... We want to convert these these Latin villages into actual Germanic towns because our our towns do not take up any um, food. They don't take any food consumption, right? So this Latin town is taking up food consumption minus 10, whereas this Torp does not. So we'll have to work on that. We'll get some unrest down here. Um, what's the unrest up here? Yeah, because of food. We have a lack of food. A food shortage. So we made a trade jetty down here, so definitely we're going to need uh, a fishing jetty here. That's going to take four turns, so in the meantime, we can just hold on out for that. Let's go and get these bows. I don't know about these, um, I think we're going to hold off on these brigands here for now. Yeah, these turn from, from skirmisher infantry to cavalry, although I just don't want to do that. I don't want to do that just yet. I might actually want to get some infantry here, Germanic warbands, or the, uh, the noble Germanic swordsmen. Let's see here. So the thing is, is these medium axe infantry, these guys can uh, pierce armor. Whereas these men are just tier 2 infantry. They're, they're good, but they don't have any good armor piercing ability. But I do need some heavy infantry, so... Health 122, morale 56. Yeah, those guys are pretty beast. Charge bonus of 30 on these men. Although these guys' melee defenses kick ass. It's just, dude, they're so expensive. 293 versus 194? Jesus Christ. Let's end the turn there. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see where that goes. I think I might have to raise an army here in the south. For sure. Because I think we're going to have some uh, some unrest. Alright, let's see. Development community property. Sweet. Household gain. Got, uh, let's see. Godan's Inspirer in our General Gundiok. Let's see. Melee attack plus 10. Armor minus 15%. But battle movement speed plus 10%. Holy crap. Nice. Some war between Romano Africa and the Moors. So what are we going to do here? Should we upgrade the goldsmith? We have some sanitation. We don't have really any problems with sanitation. Um, yeah, I can go for the goldsmith and the gold mines. Or I build another structure somewhere. 
I'm not gonna lie, unrest I think is a little bit of a problem. There's a lot of unrest here. The food situation will, will clear itself up. After that, we're gonna be just fine on unrest here in the north. We're actually already taking care of that. What about here? It's getting better. Difficulty level, taxes, religious differences. Yeah, we'll need some Aryan Christianity here. Uh, I'm lucky, actually, the Visigoths do follow Aryan Christianity, so hopefully if they're smart, they're going to be converting most of their territory. But I guess we'll find out. Let's see, the Vandals. Can we trade with the Vandals? Come on. Want to trade? Yeah, we can offer... Uh, let's offer like 680 bucks, 80 ducats, because 161 per turn in our income... Basically, this little payment pays itself off in, in what, five turns, six turns? Sweet. Yeah. Romano Africa. I don't mind trading Come with them either, although speak. I don't think they want a trade treaty. Uh, what about the Ostrogoths? glad to listen to your offers, but do not wrap them in lies. The Lord knows truth. Nice. Good stuff. So that payment pays itself off as well because of our increase uh, from income and trading. Do not try my pay this guy here. The Visigothics we don't want to trade with because we're going to go to war with them. So we are 20th in the world in strength. This guy's 5th, right? So, and uh, his king is Am Amalaric. Damn. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have to put in some work to kick his ass. Let's see. Actually, you know what? Maybe we will convert these guys to uh, to cavalry. We'll see where that goes. These these cavalry forces, very light melee cavalry, poor, very poor armor, but high health and good speed. Um, how's their charge bonus? 45. So these guys are good against running down skirmishers. I probably can't put them toe-to-toe -to -toe with infantry, though. Let's go for... I want to upgrade that goldsmith, but since we have 2,500, why don't we... Brigantium is probably the least likely to be attacked by anybody, so why don't we go and build something there? And go for a chieftain's house, a farmstead. Some more food would be kind of cool. I don't think we're going to have a problem with food, per se, though. Any sanitation issues? I don't think... Well, maybe, actually. Sanitation actually might be something to do. We can get an Aryan Baptistry, or we can get another artisan so we can recruit some cav or something. Um, what about the Chieftain's House? Here, public order plus seven. Food consumption. No real wealth, though. We can't get industry because we already have it in Bracara. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually leaning towards that sanitation, I'll admit. Because we're going to have some squalor issues. The Aryan Baptistry would be really cool. Although, I don't think we need it here. The Aryan, um... The Aryan influence. I'm leaning towards a farmstead, actually. Let's see, how fertile is this land? Oh, it's rich! Oh, damn, okay, so getting some... Getting a farmstead actually might be what we have to do here. We can get a farmstead, and we have even more, um, more building slots. I would love to get some sanitation going, if I can afford it. How much is the sanitation? 1350 for a well. Yeah, let's go and get a farmstead, and let's go ahead and get a well for the squalor. Good stuff. And then we're going to recruit some troops in here. I think we are going to get some um, some more Germanic warbands and an Onager, and then we'll upgrade these to cavalry as well. And I might actually send this army south to go clear up some, uh, some unrest down here. I'm trying to keep an eye out, just in case the Visigoths go to war with anybody else. Hmm... Got some unseasonal conditions. Okay. Is he at war with anybody? The Visigoths? Preferably, we would want to go to war with the Visigoths when they're busy somewhere else. Because if we don't, he's going to focus all his attention on me. Let's go and try and negotiate some NAPs. Romans. I would love an NAP with you, buddy. Yeah, because of those relations, he probably won't do it. The Visigoths. What about the Moors, man? The Mono Africa. Give words plentiful haste. Other no, he's unlikely to, to do anything. Yeah, and the Moors, the Moors don't the like me. Is open. Let's see. Minus 30 cultural version, rulers cultural prejudice. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Why is unrest worse here? We're getting immigrants, apparently. Food minus 12. So we do have food issues. Right now, we're in wintertime. We don't produce a lot of food. Okay, so these homesteads are going to help us out. Let's go ahead and go for that goldsmith for the 1200 in income. And that's going to be it for this turn. We get farming in one more turn, as well as that well. We're going to have some fishing jetties, trade jetties. We're going to have this trade jetty as well. We're going to get some pretty serious income. I want to get this stack built up to, like, a good level. Probably some more inventory, a couple more calf. 
maybe like one or two Onagers, and then after that we'll be we'll be good to go in that army. Hopefully, um, possibly consider invading the Visigoths when they're at war with somebody. We have to wait for the right time to strike. Construct a building in the following chain: religion, Aryan Christian, uh, Aryan Christian following. There we go. We resolved our food shortage now. Yeah, when we get some more food, we'll have to do it down here. Wow, look at our income. 4,500. Jesus Christ, we got up 1,000 income in that time. Nice. So, um, I don't really need that much food right now. So, we're going to we're gonna want to look for the structure that gives us the most wealth. And it's going to be this guy, Pastures. 270 additional wealth, plus a base of 180, plus 20 food, plus 30 more food per uh, per local fertility level. It's going to be this place, the Pastures, yeah. Let's see, this would give us 30 wealth plus 125, and a lot of food. We get 90 food from that structure here. This is kind of a good balance, 175 plus 125, but this place is 180 plus 270. Let's see, 175 plus 125 is 300 wealth, whereas 180 plus 270 is, uh, what, 40, 450? Yeah. So we're going to want to go for that guy, and then we're going to want to go for... Let's see here, what's the squalor? This is public order, this is squalor plus 2. And then this gives us uh, sanitation in outlying regions. We'll want to probably take... We, we could build that, actually. That's that's That'd be okay. Or I could just build some troops. We need good yeah, let's go for Germanic Warbands. Let's go for the Onagers. And then we have one more slot open. Uh, we got four Germanic Spearmen. These guys are actually pretty decent. Melee attack, melee damage, melee defense. Armor, 50 armor is not bad. I kind of don't want another... I, want, I don't really want this Hurler here. I, I think I prefer bows. Actually, look at that. The slingers are actually have more missile damage than uh, than the bows. That's curious. And then these these brigands are obviously armor piercing. Should I go for two onagers in that case then, or another hurler? I mean, we got we're gonna upgrade these guys to to cavalry. That means four four ranged. I might not have enough inventory. Actually, I might prefer some more inventory. But this Onager, because we have good melee damage, would be better against infantry. Screw it, we'll go ahead and we'll get, um... Why don't we go for two Onagers? And let's go ahead and upgrade these guys to, uh, to Cav. That's perfect. So it'll be eight infantry, three bows, one slinger, five Cav, two, two skirmish Cav. With, the, with their armor piercing. Missile damage of 90. Ammunition of 7. Holy shit. That is really good. And then we're going to have two artillery pieces. That's going to be a beast ass army. It's going to be pretty difficult to defeat that guy in battle. And then we'll probably upgrade some of these towns here fairly soon. Um, it's not a big deal. But I, I do think I want to work on it. Let's see. 95.6% conversion cost due to local culture. Fascinating. Let's see, Aryan Christianity, we're going to, yeah, plus 2.3% per turn. Alrighty. Alright, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a quick break here. Let me know um, if you're excited for this campaign. Please let me know in the comments down below. If you want to download this mod, make sure to uh, check the description down below. I will see you guys in the next episode. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys very soon. Thanks so much.